one. Today we're doing 11.3 corresponding parts of similar figures. So we're actually going to skip uh, part A here a little bit. Um, right now the only tools we have for measuring angles are using protractors, so, uh, but, but we can do some ballparking. Um, angle N here, we can pretty much tell that that's 90 degrees. Similarly, we can say that angle D is 90 degrees. So note here, these are corresponding angles. Um, angle A and angle K, we can say that both of those are 90. Um, and we can't really do the rest, but take my word for it, <clears throat> uh, they're congruent. So um, these, these corresponding angles are congruent between these, these two figures. Um, and then they want us to look at the, the ratios of the side lengths. And this one we can do a little better. Um, AB is one, two, three and a half. 3.5 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 otherwise known as 1 half, right? If I were, I were to simplify it. Um, BC, we'll skip that one. Uh, CD, CD is 2 over 4, otherwise known as 1 half. And then finally AD, that looks like 3 over NK, which is 6. 3 over 6 is the same as 1 half. And I bet if we work this one out, it comes out to one half as well. So um, the ratios of all the corresponding side lengths are equal. That's known as being proportional. So are the figures similar? Um, describe how you know. Well, um, there's a center of dilation, and um, we can we can run the numbers on each point. But as it turns out, each point is a dilation with a scale factor of two. But um, so we uh, we. We, we can get to that the fact that the two figures are indeed similar um, using that, that dilation. Okay, um, what about uh, this guy here? We can take a look. Are all the angles congruent? Yes, um, right? Congruent, 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 congruent. So let's look at the ratios of the sides. What's AB over EF? AB over EF. Uh, that's one, two, three, four over one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, that's four over seven. What about BC over FG? BC over FG, that's three over five. Is four over the seven the same as three over five? No. So as it turns out, these ones are not equal. Um, are the figures similar? Well, as it turns out, uh, no. Because we, could, we can run the numbers. Um, but yes, for some of these points, like for point C and G, we can say that there's a dilation with the center of the origin. But note here, B, if I were to dilate that out again, um, it, it wouldn't end up right there. It would be over here, something like that. So uh, we can say no, that they're not similar. If two figures have the same number of sides and the corresponding angles are congruent, right? So we just did this. Um, for both of our figures, we had the same number of sides and the corresponding angles are congruent. Does that mean that a pair of corresponding sides are either congruent or proportional? Um, no, it doesn't. So think back to this example here. Um, this meets that criteria, but the corresponding sides are not necessarily congruent or proportional. If two figures have a center of dilation, is a corresponding pair of sides necessarily proportional? So this one means if, if they have a center of dilation, so here's my little triangle things. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So these come in um, to a center of dilation. That means that they are similar. Therefore, um, their corresponding pairs of sides, yes, will be proportional. They'll have that same ratio between them. If two figures have a correspondence of proportional sides, so they're basically they're saying if I have uh, my two figures here, and I look at this side and this side and this side and this side, and I say, oh, sorry, I shouldn't use congruence marks. But um, I don't think I just saw that. Anyway, if those corresponding sides happen to be proportional, does that mean that this figure is um, similar, basically? They say center dilation, but they're just getting at it. Does that mean that those um, two figures are similar? No, it is not enough. Again, going back here, we could look at this. We could say that <coughs> EF um, and AB have a ratio of 4 over 7. Uh, CD and GH have a ratio of 4 over 7, right? So ignoring the other ones, if we just looked at these 
um, two corresponding pairs of sides. They have a, um, uh, the same ratio, right? They're proportional. It's not enough. We, we have to come up with a little bit more to determine whether or not something is, is um, uh, similar or not. Okay, so this brings us to properties of similar figures. So we're just going to work in a forward direction for right here. We're just going to uh, be given similar figures, and then we have to draw some conclusions from it. So the properties of similar figures are that the corresponding angles are congruent, right? If they're the same shape, think of two triangles that are the same shape. Um, all the angles are the same, right? The size may be different, but the shape is the same. However, we can make some conclusions about the sides. We could say that the sides are proportional. So that means that uh, the ratio between AB and XY is the same ratio as BC to YZ. We've been doing this before, right? A lot of our dilations are like one half or two because um, those fit well on a sheet of paper. Um, so the ratio will be, uh, you know, one half for each of those or three or something like that. Um, so so they, they worked out these, these ratios here. Of note, there's another way to write these. Um, that comes up sometimes. The ratios between the um, sides within a triangle will also be the same. So for example, you could say something like um, AB over BC is equal to XY over YZ. This is still a valid conclusion. Um, if you write something like this when you uh, are doing problems, you can st you can still do a lot of your problems by, by thinking of it this way. And sometimes I find it's easier to think of it this way. Um, also of note that these ratios are a little bit arbitrary. You could do um, x, y over a, b, that sort of thing. Usually um, you'll want to have it sync up with the um, scale factor, right? So if that ratio is one half, that means you're having a scale factor of one half and you're shrinking it. But the, the ratio itself, um, can go either way. Okay, we'll do a sample problem. Uh, we'll do B here. Figure that JKLMN maps to figure TUVWX by similarity transformation. Write a proportion that contains TX and LM. List any angles that must be congruent to angle V or congruent to angle K. Well, um, we can figure out what's congruent to angle V. If they're similar, uh, the corresponding angle will be congruent. So what's the corresponding angle to angle V? That would be angle L. What corresponds with angle K? That's angle U. So, so that's pretty doable. Um, and again, you can write this ratio differently, but um, for here, we'll figure theirs out. Uh, what corresponds with TX? TX, first and last letter, so that's JN. LM, LM is the third and fourth letter, so that's BW. Um, just again, we, we can write our a, a slightly different version here. Um, using the, the ones from the same side. So we could say it's like something like Tx over um, Vw equals um, uh, Jn over um, Ln. This would be totally valid. And then, of course, the uh, reciprocals of uh, both of these would work as well. You know two figures are similar. What angle or side measurement must you know to find the dilation used in the transformations mapping one figure to another? Uh, well, we must have at least one pair of corresponding sides, right? Um, just because you find, this is a quick example, if you know this is you know three and you know that this is two, you're like, oh yeah, there's a ratio between those, we're good. No, 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 no. Um, if it needs to be proportional, that means it's going to have the same ratio over here, right? So it's going to be, I'm making up numbers, six and, and four, or something like that, right? That's what it means to be proportional. A single rate, everything has a single ratio. If you just take two things, you can compare them. Um, we want that these two things to have the same relationship as these two things over here. Okay, um, I'm going to skip five and six. We're going to skip ahead a little bit. Um, go down here. Uh, let's do this one. Okay. Um, so again, uh, we know that these figures are similar. So if we were to calculate for x, um, we can just set these angles, the corresponding angles, uh, equal to each other. So uh, angle y is congruent to angle m. 
Therefore, we can say that 4x equals 5 times um, x minus 5. At this point, it becomes an algebra problem, right? Divide both sides by 5 or distribute, um, something like that. Um, and then we can solve for x. Similarly, this one here, we have this side, jk, corresponds with wv. We know that they have the same proportion as mn and zy. So we're given values for mn and zy. mn and zy have values of 1.5 and 1. Multiple ways to set this up, though. This isn't necessarily the only way. You could, again, do the reciprocal. So you could do bw over jk equals yz over mn. Totally fine. Totally works. Um, in fact, I sometimes will flip it in order to get the, the variable in the uh, numerator here because it, it makes it much easier to calculate um, algebraically. Also, we can do the, um, the, these two, the ratio of these two guys, right? So we could write um, jk over mn is equal to, uh, the big one has to be on top still, though. Um, so wv over yz. So this would totally work as well, as well as the reciprocal here and the reciprocal here. Um, that that ratio also works. So just keep that in mind. Another option. Yeah, you do the algebra, plug and chug at that point, you get x equals seven. Cool. Uh, see if you can do these ones real quick. So pause. Good book right here. Um, again, we can set up this ratio. So we have ABE is similar to ACB. If we want to find the value of X, we know that this angle is going to be congruent to that. Um, that one's pretty doable. You just solve. Value of Y is a little harder. This time we know that this side, DC and EB, we can set up that ratio. We can say DC over EB is equal to AD over AE. Um, note here, AD is not Y centimeters, right? Um, AD is 5.6 plus Y. So don't let that throw you off. Um, so we get 5.6 plus Y. Um, again, a little bit of algebra, a little bit of jumping around, but uh, you should be able to, to calculate and crunch that. Okay, that's it. That's all I got. Have a good one.